Hello, it's system review time and this is the new Nintendo CBA WTF Okay then, so this is a Nintendo Game Boy Advance SP AGS 101. This is a PAL Kiddy V90, aka Q90, aka 64-bit game. Look, it says so on the box. Come on, China. Put some effort in. What the hell? Okay, so what the hell is going on here? We'll call it the PAL Kiddy V90. That seems to be what it's mostly called. It is... It wouldn't be fair to call it a GBA clone. The form factor is absolutely Game Boy Advance through and through. And it's actually really good. Um, in terms of design. Not necessarily in terms of execution, but we'll... We'll look at that. First of all, volume knob, it works. Micro SD card, it works. Power on and off. You've got to be careful with this. Um, we'll get into that. L1, R1, L2, R2, which is nice to have both sets of buttons, but my god. The uh, They're not especially nice. They work, but they're not great in terms of feel. Um, the D-pad is absolutely fine. I like this D-pad. It's one of the nicest D-pads I've encountered on what is a really cheap piece of um, equipment. Face buttons are okay. That button's okay. That all the buttons are okay. You've got stereo speakers. I'm not a hundred percent convinced they're actually stereo. It might just be that there's one speaker in there somewhere, and you've got two vents. Not sure. Uh, oh yeah, USB-C charging and headphone socket. Headphone socket, Nintendo battery compartment that I absolutely cannot remove. I can't, I can't get this off. Um, saying that, I do know what battery is inside it because I've taken the thing apart because <laughs> I wanted to see if there was an internal SD card. That is your Nokia type battery. Battery life is probably about two hours. Hard to say. Um, we'll talk about that in a bit as well. So, I really like the form factor. The quality of plastic is... At a glance, it looks like the system it is most competing with, uh, which would be the LDK game, except the quality of the plastic is nowhere near as good as that. It's like they got a really, really good design, but they needed to save money, so they saved it on the quality of the plastic. It, it's not that kind of really nasty, brittle stuff. It's just that the finish, there's there's like a square, I can see a square here that's, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, that's dull, while the rest of it isn't. And like lines there, it's like there are inconsistencies in the plastic during the moulding process. And it makes it look kind of nasty. When it's actually, you know, it does what it's meant to do, and it is a really... I really like the form factor. You can chuck it in your pocket and forget about it and not worry about scratching the screen, which is what I really like about the GBA. So, in terms of the, the, the design they went for, superior to the LDK game. What's it like to use? Hmm. Okay, we're going to look at this with the firmware that came with it. And then the custom firmware that I've put inside it. We'll turn it on, and what do we get? NX Hope. And you really NX Hope that it's going to work. It's uh, some kind of open dingux thing. It's got all the usual open dingux stuff. Um, settings. Oh, and you use the shoulder buttons to go along through these. Emulators. Built-in games. Uh... 
More set. No, we're, wait. Okay. Apps. Yeah, apps, emulators, games, settings. We won't worry about the apps and the settings and the games because they're your standard open dinguk stuff. You've seen them all before. What we want to know is how well does this thing emulate? Let me zoom in. Okay. Are we focused? Not very. Oh well, it'll have to do. So emulators, we've got Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Famicom, Super Famicom, Game Gear, Master System, Mega Drive, PC Engine, Wonderswan, Neo Geo Pocket, PlayStation. Yeah, really. Uh, well, there was more arcade, CPS, Neo Geo, MAME for all. And this thing comes preloaded with several thousand ROMs built in. Some of these work fine, as you would expect. Game Boy, Game Boy Color work great. Let's have a look. This thing is like, it's a Game Boy Advance clone. Let's have a go at the Game Boy Advance emulator, shall we? If I can remember what button to press. Mario Kart. Because I have to play Mario Kart, don't I? Yep, it plays Mario Kart Super Circuit on the GBA just fine. And that, to me, that matters. That matters a lot. Okay. But it doesn't play everything great. Let me see. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. Yeah. So, um... You wouldn't... You wouldn't want to play that. <laughs> Just... I'm not a fan of Duke Nukem anyway. But, you know... Uh, no, that's terrible. So, GBA. The GBA clone is very, very patchy at playing GBA games, which is a shame. Because um, you would think that would be the one system they'd try really hard to make it work on. But, you know... Moving on, Super Famicom. Let's go for Super Mario Kart because it's me and, you know. Um, yeah. So, that's appalling. <laughs> that's really bad. It is not good. Um, to be fair, the uh, whoops. The LDK game didn't really fare much better f on Super Famicom, SNES, whatever games that had extra chips in them. You know, don't even think about um, Super FX powered games. You know, this can't even do stuff with an added DSP. Uh, the LDK game was no better. It's just what happens when you buy a system that costs what this one costs. Let's bang out of that. Other stuff on here, and I haven't told you what it costs yet, but I'm going to tell you that at the end. Let's look at something else that isn't really very good. If I can find... Why am I focusing on the stuff that's rubbish? Because it will bring into focus what this can and can't do. Wait, wait. Oh, God almighty. It'll bring into focus really what you're getting. But there's there's a lot more that I need to show you and explain before we talk about that. So a uh, Neo Geo Pocket Color in this case. Um, so this is that really fast paced game <laughs> that we all know and love. Um, yeah. Okay. Forget that. Oh, we can't even... There, that's how we exit. Um, 
it's not really up to that either. What about PlayStation? Not sure what we've got on here. Have we got anything? There's not much on here. There's a limited selection of games that have been installed. And I don't know any of these enough to say whether they're any good or not. Capcom versus SNK. I don't know what's happening. We're just pushing buttons randomly and yeah, whatever. See what happens. Have we got audio? There we have. Okay. Can we play now, please? Hmm. Okay, we have. Get, oh. All right. Um. Okay. It sort of works if you can put up with random stuttering, which is interesting. It's certainly no worse than it was doing on um, snares. Okay, so that's the stuff that it's really not great at. All the other stuff, it's pretty safe to say it is quite adequate. Um, MAME, out of the box, it comes with no ROMs. <laughs> so you'll have to put your own ROMs on. But there are a lot of... Um, how, do we, how do we quit? I can't, that seemed to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of Neo Geo. Do they work? I think they do. You see, this is, it, it's not a Neo Geo emulator. It, this is Final Burn Alpha. There's like three different icons here, and they're all Final Burn Alpha. They're, maybe it's different versions for different systems, like CPS and Neo Geo and whatever. Mm. Well, does it? Maybe not. Slow. Oh, that's not so good. Yeah, that's 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 not good. Looks lovely. I mean, the graphics, but <laughs> the movement is not there. So, uh, mm, okay. I've never seen this game before. I'm going to have to play this on a more capable system just to see what it's like because that's impressing the hell out of me. But not the gameplay, not the frame rate here on this. Hmm, okay. So, out of the box, it is a very mixed bag. I've shown you all the stuff it doesn't do. Um, Everything else, it pretty well does do. PC Engine, I, Wonder Swan, I think, is adequate. I don't, not sure. Um, Mega Drive, absolutely fine, which is probably what I would spend most of my time playing here if I was going to be playing this, and potentially the Game Boy. Um, oh, what did I just, okay. Yeah. Can we alter the... Yeah, you see, I want... Oh, is that all we get? I want to change the colour. Oh, well. Because I liked that. The menu looked good. Anyway. It does Game Boy okay. That is it out of the box. It is a mixed bag. Uh, you got a lot of stuff that really they shouldn't have bothered putting on there. Or at least you got a... It's hit and miss what games are going to work on a given system, like the GBA and like the SNES and, and Final Burn Alpha. Some stuff will work, some stuff won't. You've got 2,000 ROMs and maybe more, but they're not necessarily all worth playing. However, 
this is as it comes out of the box. There is custom firmware for it, and the custom firmware actually shows what this thing really is. It is a BitBoy Pocket Go clone in a GBA style shell. And I have downloaded and installed onto another SD card the firmware for that. So let's have a look at that and see what it's like. Okay, let's turn that on. Pocket Go, in case you were in any doubt. Settings, apps, emulators, games. More games. But I'm not really interested in those. But also more emulators. Amiga, Game Boy, GBA SP, well, GBA, um, NES, SNES, more SNES, Master Gear and Game Gear, ColecoVision, Mega Drive, Atari 2600, Atari Lynx, PC Engine, MAME, Final Burn Alpha, Neo Geo, DOSBox, Pokemon Mini, Pokemon Mini something, I don't know, I don't do anything with that, WonderSwan, PS1, Vectrex, um, MSX, uh, I think these are settings apps for setting the rumble on a couple of the emulators, but this thing doesn't have a rumble on it, so whatever. <laughs> yeah, um, basically more emulators. Is it better? Do they run better? That's what you want to know, probably. No, that's probably what you want to know. Do they run better? Mm, let's have a looky. This has got my game selection on it. This this firmware obviously doesn't come with all the games, so you need to put your own. Well, the music's working. Not sure about the volume control. <laughs> Hmm, okay. Yeah. Alright, that is kind of slightly better, but frame skip, isn't it? It's, the, the, it's not great. I wouldn't want to play that. So, SNES is... That's not what I wanted to do. That's what I wanted to do. SNES is not great. I can tell you that uh, GBA is also... It plays Mario Kart just fine. I haven't tried Duke Nukem. I tried Doom 2 and it played as badly as that Duke Nukem GBA thingy that I played a couple of minutes ago. But... I've pressed the right button. Have I pressed the right button? Yes, I have. This plays just great, which is cool. Three, two, one, go. How do I change the view? And now I can change the view. Oh well, we'll just go with this view then. So V Rally 3 is very playable on here, which is great because it is, to my mind, one of the best and most technically impressive GBA games there is. It's just brilliant. And it works fine on here, which is cool. I, I suppose I should have tested it on the uh, standard firmware, but it wasn't on there, so I couldn't. So GBA, again, it is a case of trial and error, seeing what works well and what doesn't. Same with snares, you know, some stuff's going to work just fine. If it doesn't use a DSP chip or uh, any other additional chips, it's going to work okay. Mega Drive is fine, Atari is fine, Lynx is fine, PC Engine, fine. Um, PS, Vectrex, I can't make Vectrex work. Um, I think I probably have the wrong wrong ROMs. Maybe I need to put like a, a BIOS file in there somewhere, but I don't know where. Um, 
here's the thing. PS1 is actually quite good. Granted, a lot of stuff is not going to work, but some of my favourites do. So you're not going to have the background music, and the frame rate is not is not a hundred percent, but it is. You could play this. I would play this if I was sitting somewhere on a bus. I don't know why I'd be on a bus since I have a car, but you know, doctor's waiting room, something like that. If I could get a doctor's appointment, which you just can't these days. Um, yeah, I would play this. It's it's adequate. It's good enough, and that that impresses me greatly. It kind of makes the difference between is this a piece of junk or is it a viable handheld. That's not the gear I wanted. It does slow down when you've got other cars, sometimes. It also plays Gran Turismo 2, possibly actually better than Gran Turismo 1. Also plays Harmful Park very nicely, Ridge Racer and Spyro the Dragon. They're all I put all of those on there. So, other things I need to tell you. Because I, I could demo all of the emulators, but honestly, they either work or they don't. I've, t I've shown you which ones don't. The other ones largely do. It is trial and error. I'm not going to do trial and error while making this video. You've seen this open dingux operating system kind of thing before. So you know what to expect, I would hope. Uh, you might not have, but anyway. Something I said I needed to show you. You've got your on-off switch there. Do not just turn it off. Think of this not as a handheld games console like a Nintendo GBA, even though they're trying really hard to make it look like one. Think of it as a small handheld Linux PC. Because if you just turn it off, the next time you boot it up, it's going to sit there and go, duh, didn't shut down correctly, going to have to check the partition now, please wait half an hour, which is kind of annoying if you just want a quick play and it, it's sitting there crunching through your SD card to see if it's okay or not. It needs to be shut down properly like a computer. And to do that, you go to your settings and you go to power and you press your A button and then you press it again. And then it shuts down. And when it's done that, your little light is still on because your power's still on. Then you can turn that off. But if you just turn it off, assuming you don't completely bugger it up, it will sit there and go durr at you and check your card. I found out the hard way <laughs> several times because I kept forgetting. Yeah, um... So, what do I think of this? It is a very, very mixed bag. I love the form factor. I'm not overly impressed with the quality of the plastic, but it's, it, it's good enough, you know? It's, it's not slick and polished and shiny and high quality. It is cheap, but it's not especially nasty. It gets the job done without looking too fancy. The firmware, out of the box, with 2,000 games on it, or thereabouts, can't remember exactly how many are on it, um, it's the kind of thing, it, it's not got that many emulators and some of them aren't that good. Give it to your kids, you're not going to worry if it gets broken, but it's not, I mean our emulator handhelds really suitable for kids because you can mess up, you can get confused if they're not familiar with emulators and how to load ROMs and tinkering with your settings and stuff like that and they could mess it all up with the um, open dingux commander file management thing. I, uh, I hesitate to think of giving a thing like this to a child, but anyway, out of the box the firmware I think is not great. 
the custom firmware with the uh, Pocket Go firmware, it's got more emulators. Some of them are still pretty crappy, but there are more of them. You can put your own ROM set on it. It's not much more capable in terms of whether emulators work well or not for given systems. SNES and GBA are still very patchy. PS1 is still underpowered, but it does work. Mega Drive is great. All of the 8-bit systems are great. Th the question is, do I think this is a piece of junk that you should avoid like the plague? No, actually, I don't. I have seen reviews. I've seen one particular fairly popular reviewer just like say, this is a piece of crap. I'm sick of reviewing these things. It's rubbish. Here's the thing. I don't think it's a piece of junk. For one very, very, very good reason. £28. That's what this cost. I got this from China. It took a couple of weeks to get here. £28. I've even seen it for £26. Now, not that long ago, that kind of money would have got you a really cheap, nasty, crappy, handheld Famiclone. All you could play was a fixed selection of god-awful NES and Famicom games that were rubbish and all you wanted to do was throw it in the bin. And here you are with a thing that cost, you know, it's not quite pocket money unless you're a rich kid, but 28 quid is really, really cheap for something that can do what this can do, albeit some of it rather badly. You know, if you can't afford or don't want to afford something like, well, certainly not a GPD XD and probably not even the uh, RG350 or 280. If you're not in the market for that kind of thing, you, you don't want to spend that much. 28 quid. You can leave it in your pocket. You don't have to worry about it getting scratched up because it looks kind of tatty already. <laughs> um... It is a thing where you need to know what you're getting and what you want. It's not for everyone, but it's definitely for some people. I've got several systems now that I cart around with me. If I'm, if I'm driving somewhere, I'll stick my RG350 in the car. Uh, I've got my uh, RG280M sits in my big coat pocket. I've got an LDK game sits in my light coat pocket pocket. This is going to go in my leather jacket pocket. Um, it, that's pretty much what it is. It's, uh, it's, uh, you just want to cart something around, leave it in your pocket. Not necessarily, it, it's not a serious gaming system. It's something to leave in your pocket for when you go out. And they're so cheap that you could feasibly have several, you know, one for each jacket. <laughs> that's what it is. It's to stuff it in your jacket pocket and forget about it. And then when you're sitting in a queue somewhere, you put your hand in your pocket and, oh, look, I can play video games while I stand here and I won't be so bored. That's what this is. And for that, I like it and I think it's not terrible. OK, that's about all I've got to say, really. I will leave a link down in the uh, info area to where you can get the custom firmware and there is also a, a there's a video on that page it's by ETA Prime who shows you how to install it I would say if you're going to get one of these do get the custom firmware and put that on because it is better it's not going to improve the performance as such but you'll have more emulators to play with also before I go I want to say a great big thank you to my Patreon supporters uh, it was with Patreon money that I bought this. So, great big thank you to all of you. Uh, I've got another system review. Well, I'm waiting for the system to arrive. I'm not going to tell you what it is. It's a bit more fancy than this. It's one of the newer systems. Um, but China being China, it looks like while they were supposedly in stock there, uh, I have paid money. It would appear to be a pre-order because they're taking their sweet time about it. I don't think they've actually got them. But anyway, there's more system reviews coming. Okay. Thank you for watching. Um, it says here, Bedway offers his tanks to those who subscribe to his 
Patreon account thing. Uh, is that what he needs?